all of a sudden he was very fast. And so you may not know exactly where you're at until your full growth spurt, but you're going to have a pretty good indication. If you're fast like Austin was, the fastest kid in his class, he is probably going to be fast once he matures as well. And so, um, and who was yours, Wendy? Amy who? Amy Ernsting. And yeah, Amy Ernsting is probably, she probably was fast once she was, uh, had reached uh, adulthood as well. Um, if she stayed. Well, she us. was, she took cross country meet every freaking year. Cross and country is a distance run. It, it is. Uh, but yeah. yeah, so she may not be the fastest kid in your class. But I beat her at the smaller races. So then so you're, you're the fastest faster. kid in your class. About the speed, yeah. Okay. About distance. Amy was the distance runner, so she could win the long distance. So she was probably more type one. If I she would get halfway country. through that meet and I would start cramping up so bad. Yeah, you're not. See, you're probably more type two X based upon your distribution. So, again, it's the couch so, potato. Yeah, so each person has different <laughs> ratios. Great. You all are unique, Carmen. I think this kind of fits in your new. Uh, the new April, Carmen, is everybody is wonderful in their own right. Would you say? Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. They're not. Carmen, they keep thinking that. You know, they say like every snowflake is unique. Yeah. And so it's all different. Mm -hmm. How could they possibly know that? Um, I don't know. And so, um, but I would say the universe is an exciting place. So I think it's very exciting to think about that, that they're all different. But how could they possibly how much know snow? that? Yeah, how would you know that? But the other thing you didn't know is that, um, think about the number of snowflakes that is in snow. And so there has to be one. Throughout history, right? Yeah, it's someone, yeah. So, it's like somebody saying, like, you look like exactly like somebody else, like, you power know, like, Yeah, man, it's like, I yeah. it's a real possibility. You'll, you'll find your doppelganger. Yeah. So, yeah. So I don't know if they can say that, but I can Working your minds. Yeah, <laughs> so, um, I don't know, and, uh, uh, the fact that we have had snow um, probably before we've been thinking about snowflakes is it's, uh, mind boggling. The most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. But it, it is interesting to think that there's never been a snowflake that has been like that. So, Carmen, you are. <laughs> yeah, see? Carmen likes it. Yeah, so. Um, interestingly enough, arm and leg ratios are usually similar. So, usually you don't have fast twitch arms and slow twitch legs. Although you've seen some people in the gyms that don't work their legs out. <laughs> so you're wondering about that. But typically they're going to be the same. Okay? And so if you're an endurance athlete, type 1 is going to predominate. Power athletes, type 2 is going to predominate. Okay? But there's going to be muscle types that are in everyone that are more type 1. Your soleus in your calf is more of a slow twitch muscle. Okay? And so it's going to be, again, type 1 uh, fibers in there and because... Even uh, uh, power athletes, sprint athletes, have type 1 fibers, about 50% or maybe a little less, but they're going to have type 1 fibers. And so some of those are more specific in regards to that, okay? Genetic factors, we already talked about that, okay? Uh, they may determine the number or the alpha motor neurons which innervate the fibers, the number of it, okay? Uh, differentiate it on it. But you can see training is going to have an effect on it. If training didn't, we wouldn't be having people train, right? So Austin wouldn't be making money training people um, with their uh, 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 to say they get better over time. And so that's what coaching does. And so people spend lots of money to have people train them so that they can be faster in uh, endurance or faster in strength training. So typically your clientele, Austin, what do they look for? Are they looking to be stronger or are they just trying to lose weight? What is their goal? All over the place. All over the place, exactly. But if you couldn't do that, if you trained them, you wouldn't have a job, would you? So it wouldn't be. And so Usain Bolt just comes out of his rocking his recliner chair in Jamaica, comes, runs a race, and then he sits back down. That doesn't happen. So he's working hard on his craft. He's training with coaches. And even small bits of time are going to have an effect on that. Okay? And so now we're, uh, there's a group of individuals, I think there's several groups that are working on trying to break the two-hour barrier for the marathon. I know that Dr. Wayne is part of the group, mm -hmm. uh, and there's another large group in England that does it. So will they be able to do that? Who knows? But likely you're going to break the two-hour uh, barrier. Is it going to be due to coaching, or is are we going to get a genetically gifted guy that's going to come along and break it? So um, I would say, yeah.
probably mm -hmm. both, okay? But I would say that this one's probably, yeah, perfect. everything has to be perfect. But if you think about sprinting, some of the things you're saying Bolton has done, people didn't think that was gonna happen. Did coaching do that to him? Maybe, but I think that he is a genetically gifted athlete that can do what he can do. Um, and coaching is fine tuned now. So I think the two hour marathon project will be the same thing. And again, a lot of things have to align perfectly in order to do that. Technology so, is, has definitely helped over the years with athletes getting better and better. And you met, you're exactly right. But at some point, we are going to be in a situation where we hit the ceiling. Yeah. And so really, we can't, you know, we can't do it. And so then, what do you do? And this goes to some of the work that uh, Dr. Wayne has done. <coughs> Maybe you cut your legs off. So he's shown that Oscar Pistorius, who uh, is currently someone we don't want to talk about because he's not a nice guy, but Dr. Wayne showed that he had an advantage uh, running with his blades. So now he was born without lower limbs, and so he's been forced to use these blades, but if you are an athlete and you're in a race and you find out that you can run faster by cutting your lower limbs off and putting blades on there, who does that? <laughs> People that want to win. Yeah, there's, if you're going to take a, a, uh, uh, a drug that's going to improve your uh, aerobic capacity, but it may decrease your lifespan, people are doing that. People are taking steroids, um, which will ultimately probably decrease their lifespan. But um, they're willing to do that to be at the pinnacle of peak performance and win at the time because that's their motivation. That's what they're driven by. That is just so... Yeah. Well, and the other thing is the same thing can be said about you, though, Andy. So if we look at your life and look at the, some of the things that you've done and you did them, why did you do them? Because you're like, well, it's not going to happen. I'm young. I'll, I'll quit when I'm older or I'm done with this or this and that, right? I didn't know the facts. Going maybe, in. maybe that's even worse yeah. that you don't know the facts is some guy told you and knowing the facts that I know now my life is so different right exactly and so people that will do this they don't know and they're willing to look past those facts they know that drugs um, are, will have a, a, a potentially a, a, <coughs> a detrimental effect on their life but they're willing to do it because they want to perform at their peak doing that so and like, I'm going to ask you guys, if I could give you a drink right now that would give you an A in exercise physiology, but would cut your lifespan by two, three years. How many takes this drink? Two, three years. <laughs> two, three years. You know what? Give me a swig of that. Yeah, so Carmen, you're, you you're know going, what? I, mean, yeah, I think I'm going to be there with Carmen. Yeah, so you guys are thinking about that right now. <laughs> I'm not thinking about it. I'm getting the drink. So, I'm yeah, so but let's put this into perspective again. No, I'm not going to just give it to you. Um, you're thinking, well, I'll live till I'm 85. And so I'm only, you know, so if I live down 85, I'm all, I'll die when I'm 83. That's really not that big a difference. What if you don't live to 83 and you only live to, how old are you right now? 43. 43. What if you only live till 43? So you get the drink and now you're dead. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, that's so terrible. you were, you only had two more years. Yeah, so your, your lifespan was only 45, and you took the drink, and then you just died. Dude, that already after sucks. Best, after best class. <laughs> yeah. But you got an yeah. A, yeah. and you can put that on your tombstone. Go down I history. got an AX Fizz. Go down history. Woo. Yeah, go down in history. <laughs> so you guys are the epitome. You guys just did it. We're an A and X Fizz. I, mean, I think five years is my cutoff, though. Yeah. So, but yeah, but maybe... We don't know. Maybe Lance, you get hit by a bus today walking up. Maybe today you're on the front of a dark bus with your motorcycle. And so you and the reason that it's cut yeah, I feel terrible about that. Honestly. That would be the worst possible thing yeah. in history. Is a school white email from hey, four. Yeah, hey, where's the Has anybody seen Lance? He got hit by a dark bus yesterday. Holy shit. Now the first thing I say was I should have took the drink. <laughs> that's that's when uh, you realize that your words influence the world. <laughs> well, I do that all the time. I'll walk up to somebody and go, "Hey, how's your husband doing? We got a divorce." Really? So I'm not good. <laughs> or no, he's doing great. <laughs> yeah, so, so you don't have any idea then. Good. Okay. Thanks. And just keep on walking. I do that all the time. And so that wouldn't be surprising to me, is it? I just had that happen to me. Um, one of my. Uh, um, uh, son's friend's girlfriend was over for Easter at another party and I was talking to her 
we play cribbage, it's a card game. And so, and she got taught by her grandfather. So the last time I was talking to her, her grandfather was alive, we played cards, we talked about him teaching her. Oh, so no. we started playing cards again, I said, oh, man, how's grandpa doing? And she just went, and I'm, I'm like, I'm sitting around with some other people, I'm like, what, what am I saying? She goes, your grandpa died last week. I'm like, so not well. Yeah, so grandpa's not doing well. That's all he had to say. Oh, yeah, yeah, seriously. So, yeah, why are you making me uncomfortable? I didn't care. <laughs> I'm, sick. I'm just asking how he was. You're a monster. Not, yeah, I'm, I'm a monster, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so again, training, induce small changes, maybe 10% max, okay, um, that you're going to have in regards to training different fiber things. I think this is a key one. This is something that you guys, as people that are going to be in the field, need to worry about, okay, because aging is happening. Uh, the population, the aging population is increasingly um, getting very large. Okay? And at some point, there's going to be more older individuals than there are younger individuals worldwide. And so when you start looking at what happens aging-wise, um, I think that's going to be a key aspect of physiology in the future. And so uh, specifically, aging causes type 2 motor units to be lost. And so obviously, when's the last time you saw uh, Usain Bolt in a uh, type person in his 80s? Now, I saw, the, uh, there's a thing on the, um, YouTube, I think, that I just saw about two guys that are in the senior class of um, the uh, um, uh, racing, and they're in, one is 92, 93, and then I think the other one's 100. And you watch these guys, for their age, they're fast as hell. Relative to a sprinter, not moving very well at all. And so you're almost like they're almost going to fall down a little bit. We might show a video. <coughs> but a great video talking about these two battling. They're the only two guys in the category. So they're like the two top studs in sprinting in the 90 and above classification. So, um, and they both train. Uh, one of them actually is here in Dallas and trains at the Cooper Clinic. And the other one is uh, in Virginia. Uh, and he... They have, uh, it's a college track that they used to allow people to go on, and he now he's the only one that gets to go on the indoor track because he's been <laughs> grandfathered, no pun intended, in to do that. And so, so, and plus, they're worried about if they would we'll put him on the outdoor track and all of a sudden he would die. There's medical personnel that would do that. But aging is going to be huge, and a lot of research right now is focusing on what happens to aging, not only from a musculoskeletal issue, but even cardiovascular is a huge thing. Dr. Levine is working on uh, a, a huge amount of work in his um, uh, laboratory with regards to cardiovascular aging. We might show some of that when we get to the cardiovascular section. Okay? So distance runners, okay, maybe, and we're talking about elite athletes here, elite. So people that are outliers, as Wendy said earlier. So looking at the percentage of fibers compared to type 1 and then their type 2X and 2A fibers. So if you look at non-athletes, you can see 47 to 53, 47 to 53. We're working right around the 50% um, uh, median area of the fiber types. When you start looking at some of these elite athletes, you can see very high differences between fast twitch and slow twitch fibers and sprinters. Um, as well as elite distance runners, okay? And again, these, um, the key on this is the elite in there, so yeah. Uh, Austin, right? sorry, you're going to imagine these are scanned by mass and not muscle biopsies since we're talking about elite. Yeah, so I'm not sure, the, the, the problem with this is where did this data come from? Um, so uh, is, are you looking at this from a perspective, did this, <coughs> this muscle biopsies? If it is, what's the number of people that they tested, okay? So um, can you do, like maybe this is, six elite distance runners and six elite sprinters. So uh, um, I'd have to go back and look and see where they garnered this data. So, but some of the studies that you'll see um, that are, they're done on small numbers of people and they're saying, well, this is the population kind of thing. So yeah, thanks. Is, is the non-athlete category just non-elites? Yeah, so what's a non-athlete? What's your classification as a non-athlete? A non-athlete would be somebody that doesn't or has never participated in sports. <laughs> yeah, so are you guys non-athletes? Yeah. Not so elite. You're we're definitely we're not elite, yeah. but are you non-athletes? <laughs> so, yeah, so... Uh, so I can figure out the weightlifting. Yeah, so this I'm is... I'm nowhere near the elite status. No, so, so we're still yeah. in the not elite, and still 
I don't want you to not work on your SB speech. Wait, there's no lady in the SB. Just in case you're wondering, I wouldn't. If you had other things that you needed to get do, done, I might put that lower on the priority list. Just so you know. um, I think so, not to be, you know, half empty kind of guy, but yeah. So, so yeah. So uh, again, I, I would say that these are general. Uh, if you were to look at this, and we don't know where the data comes from with regards to how many non-athletes, how many track sprinters, how many distance runners we look at this. But generally speaking, you would expect this. If you are a sprinter, you would suspect that you have a higher percentage of type 2 fibers, whereas if you are a distance runner, you would suspect that you are slow twitch. Okay? Um, the percentages, you know, we could probably sit here and debate those for as long as we wanted to, but um, the data is probably coming, again, from a very small sample size. So. Um, but I think the key in this is is what you want to do in, in, in again rather than assign them numbers is the key word here is predominantly okay so if you were an elite sprinter you're predominantly fast pitch fiber whereas if you were a elite distance runner you're predominantly probably type one fiber okay and then those individuals that are non athletes or regular people controls you could even decide to say. Let's call these healthy controls as opposed to non-athletes. Um, you're you're going to be roughly 50-50. Okay. Well, we're also talking about these are genetic probabilities, not because we're talking about elite athletes. We're talking about exactly. So we we pretty much already this, um, come to the conclusion that you're an elite athlete, likely because of one predominant factor is genetically you have been predisposed to to have this, um, and so the same thing, is, um, if you were to talk about horse racing, does anybody know who Secretariat is? Secretariat was, he's run the fastest. It's a movie. It's, it's a movie. <laughs> it's actually a real horse, um, but he has run the fastest um, times uh, as a triple crown winner, won uh, the Kentucky Derby, Derby uh, Preakness and the Belmont Stakes, that's the uh, triple crown in horse racing, but he has run the fastest races uh, Time-wise, for each one of those, and obviously he uh, could do that. The conditions were he wasn't running in the mud or the rain. Um, but it turns out when the secretary died, they did an autopsy on him, and he had a significantly larger heart than most hard horses. So that genetic adaptation allowed him to run very fast across there, and I would say that that's why you would see elite runners um, with that. And so when you see some of the Kenyan guys that are uh, um, tend to be these elite distance runners, genetically they're gifted, their, their parents are passing them on. That, that, uh, and there are other factors there as well though, but if you think about it over time, they're probably living at a higher altitude, they live on a plateau in Kenya, so maybe those adaptations have occurred over time in the people that have lived there for many thousands of years, but whatever the reason is, it makes them elite distance runners. Okay? And um, we're probably not gonna be great distance runners like Kenyans are because of the genetic Okay, so characteristics of human muscle fiber types. So um, these things that you could go, we covered this up, you could tell me these things. So I think I might have tried to cover that. Let me draw something on here, see if we can cover that. Or let me just black screen it and see what happens. Um, don't look at those, don't cheat. Don't cheat me. Discard the implementations. Let's see what we got here. Oh, shapes. Oh, there it is. Alright, let's go now. We'll get rid of all that numbers. <laughs> I can't. So, number of mitochondria. What do you think? This would be type one. Um, type one. Type one. Type two X or two A. Type two X. Okay. Number of mitochondria. What do you think? High moderate flow. So Austin is saying across high moderate low. What do, you, what do you think about resistance to fatigue? Um, 
Same. resistance to fatigue. So who would be the most resistant to fatigue? Type 1. Type 1, so most resistant. What about those other two? Um, type 2A would be in the middle. Middle? Yeah. It would be a little bit resistant, but not as much as type 1. And type 2, you're out of there. Type 2X would be low? Low. Okay, so we'll say this is high. Okay, Lance, what are you saying? Predominant energy system. Predominant energy system for the type 1 would probably be um, oxidative, phosphorylated, aerobic metabolism. So we'll say aerobic. Um, type 2X. Kind of, a, kind of a mixed, kind of a lot of glycolytic in there. Okay, mixed. And then uh, type 2X, we're looking at like ATP, phosphocreatine. Anaerobic. Type 1. And glycolysis. Yeah. All right. Carmen, B max, speed of shortening, type one? Higher. Type one higher? Yeah. Say, yeah. Type one or what? Say, Fast twitch or slow twitch? Or A2, um, so with a speed of shortening, they, what are, type one or are they slow twitch or fast twitch? Remember the bars, <coughs> the graph with the bars? The green bars. So tell me, type one, slow twitch or fast twitch? Slow. Okay. Slow twitch. <coughs> right, let's look at speed of contracting. <coughs> they would be slow. Yeah, they would be slower. Okay. How about type two A? So type two or what? Are they slow twitch or fast twitch? Mixed, so they're but they're still considered fast twitch, so they're probably gonna be fast. And this one would fast. be fastest. <laughs> okay. Efficiency. Awesome, what do you think? I want most efficient. Most. Okay. Middle. And what? Not two A would be middle ground. Middle efficiency. Back two X? No. Low. Okay. We need specific tension. High, low, type uh, one. Can you explain specific tension? Tension, you explain tension. What is tension? We've been talking about it. Tension is the amount of force that it can produce. Oh, um, so type one is going to be the lowest. Okay. And then that's the graph with the end. <laughs> At 20%. So um, type 2X is going to be the highest, and then type 2A is going to be in the middle. It's going to be higher than type 1, but not as high as type 2X. Everybody agree with all of those? Yes. Okay, let's see what we have. Let's see if I can now take the discard this and then get rid of the box. Delete. Boom! How did I not get rid of all of them? <laughs> oh, it was ordered backward. Yeah. Okay, specific tension says high for both. Two I like bags. that. Oh, so stuff. we had it the other way, didn't we? So, yeah, so to flip everything, but I think everything is still the same, though. You guys had everything right. So tension oh. was high in both the two mm -hmm. X ones. Um, anything else? High, highest? Uh, the max, of sh uh, the speed of sh uh, shortening was uh, high in both type twos. Yeah, I think we had high and highest there, so I think we did that one good. Oh, it's, it's at highest, yeah. Yeah, so high and highest in ATP activity. I think oh, we got everything right. Yeah. The only thing that we didn't get was specific tension for both the two X fibers mm -hmm. are gonna be high, okay? Mm -hmm. With regards to that, so pretty good. So you guys, without knowing that, going through all of that, you did a pretty good job of identifying that, okay? Nice job. And so let's take a look at the next one. Okay, so there it is, boom, don't look, look away, look away, look away, don't cheat me, do not cheat me. Um, how do I do, insert a uh, shape? Carmen, if you cheat me, there's gonna be issues. This time I'll try to keep the, <coughs> and we don't care about the type 2B fibers, okay? So, all right, 
All right, everybody look up. I was okay. like, what are type 2B? I haven't yeah, read about those. Not, we haven't talked about those. <laughs> so, you talk about those in a, a advanced experts class. So, so type 2, don't worry about it. We're not talking about that. I thought type 2B. 2B was like another way of saying. I've read type briefly on type 2C. There's, there's, we could talk about an entire class on different fiber types. Oh, That's so what there's. I'm, yeah, there's multiple. Ones. How many? Um, I think if you, it depends on how you classify them, <coughs> but you can classify them into six and seven different categories in the types, yeah, and it's all based upon certain just subtle differences in it. That's why we're only talking about the type 1, type 2A, type 2 Well, there's different variations of this right here. Yeah, and so you're exactly right. So there may be a little different the variation in your mice and TPA, so it may be a little faster. Maybe it's how they adapt to certain stimuli, okay? So, Contraction time. Type one fibers. Slow. Slow. Okay. Or slowest. Type two A fibers. Just go with it, Wendy. Uh, okay. In the middle, they're going to be faster than type one, but not as fast as type two X. So we we'll say they're fast, fastest. Okay. Size of motor <laughs> neuron. Small, large. Say a small, 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 a little bigger, uh, large, <coughs> and then uh, largest, humongous, humongous. Resistance to fatigue. Highest. High. Moderate. <coughs> Moderate and low. Low. Okay. Activity used for. What does that mean? Well, you use slow twitch fibers. Aerobic. Okay. Or endurance. Type two A fibers. Aerobic or anaerobic. I think we said one of the per previous slides said sixteen hundred meters. Okay. And type two X. Anaerobic. You know, sprinting, right? Yeah. Okay. Maximum duration of use. Something like. Infinity sign. Hours. How about that? How about type 2A fibers? Minutes. Yeah, so maybe, maybe we go, what do you think? Two minutes. Two minutes, maybe four minutes, two to five minutes. How about that? We'll say seconds. Seconds. And this one, one min or less. How do you guys feel about that? Yeah. Force production? Low. Low, high, and high. And highest. Let's put lowest. And whoops, we didn't want that, did we? We want no, high, right? We want high and highest. Oh! No. Oh, no. <laughs> that was a I don't know if I can undo that. <laughs> huh. Yeah, we learned something there. We know what it was, though. Okay, so we were at force production? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see if we can do that. We said this was the lowest. Mm -hmm. I think we were good on all those ones, by the way. Uh, what did we say? High? So high and then highest. And highest. Yes. Okay. Carmen, tell me about the mitochondrial <coughs> density. Type 1 fibers. So you can say high here. Okay, what are you going to say? Type 2A? <coughs> Moderate. Okay. Lowest. Okay. Everybody agree with that? Mm -hmm. Capillary density, also what do you think? The high number of one. Okay. Gotta deliver the oxygen, right? Okay, low and lowest. Let's go moderate and lowest. Everybody agree with that? Mm -hmm. Oxidative capacity, Wendy, what do you think? Um high. High. Moderate and low. <coughs> Moderate and lowest. Glycolytic capacity. Lance, what do you think? Well, uh, it's a tough one. I'll say, uh, I'll say low. I want to say high here. And, uh, Is that going to be highest? Okay. Is that what you're going to go with? I was I was debating it. Yeah, I think you should go with it. Okay. That's all, right. all right, Carmen. Major storage fuel. 
doesn't produce it, they use it. So, but what would it come from? A major fuel source or storage fuel. Say it again. Whoop. I'm hoping that didn't. Uh -oh. oh, this is bad news. So think about fuels, <laughs> carbohydrates, fats, for type one. Two A fibers. I don't know what to say. Let's throw something out here about like muscle glycogen. How's that sound? Yeah. And then what about this one? Type two X fibers. How's that sound? Don't worry about the mice and heavy chain human genes. A little beyond our uh, scope. but I mean type two that's gonna be Obviously, they're going to be different, right? Yeah. Is that an insane retention in the speed <coughs> short of velocity? Um, the heavy chain? Mm -hmm. the, that we're, they're specifically talking about the genes that code for those fibers. So they're, they'll, <laughs> they're going to be different. Um, all right, so let's get out of here, get rid of the box. You want to discard all those things? Sure. We did it before. Why not now, right? Do you leave? And <coughs> thing. contraction time, slow, moderately fast, fast, okay? Nerve, uh, size of motor neurons, small, medium, large. I think we got that one right. Resistance to fatigue, high, fairly high, intermediate, okay? Depends on what your uh, definition of fatigue is. And based upon some slides that we saw before, I would say that they're not very fatigue, um, that these ones would be lower here, okay? Aero uh, activity, aerobic, long-term anaerobic, short-term anaerobic. I think we got that right. Hours, oh, this one, 30 minutes, a little, we said, what did we say? Five, wow. 10, 35. That's not too long. You're going to be, if you go back to, yeah, I think if you go back to this again, this figure right here, they have the ability to do it. This one specifically right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you, you look there, you're still producing quite a bit of force even six minutes out, so maybe you're using it for 30 minutes. Uh, I'm, I'm likely to say that's probably a little long, um, just like you're thinking minutes, but it's potential. 